Hi, I'm Dylan James. I'm an Android developer here at Ray's Labs, and I'm going to be talking about how to uh, implement the custom attributes that Richard was just talking about. So in a lot of places, it's really handy to use um, custom attributes to be able to add properties to your views so that it's easy to just take a view, pop in another place, and then just um, simply change properties of it by using XML instead of having to do this in your activity or something like that. So here we have an example of like a simple uh, custom view. Maybe it has an icon on the side, some sort of title, some sort of subtext. And the idea here is that you can add attributes that just um, will take, take values just like any other view would, and you can populate your view based on that. So why would we want to do this? Um, for one thing, this makes your views a lot easier to use. It's really easy to make them, uh, it makes them a lot more portable, and it makes it easy for someone to come along, see your view, reuse it, put a diff bunch of different properties, fill in the fields in XML, instead of doing this by hand in code somewhere. Um, this also keeps all of the view properties in XML, so oftentimes you're defining all of your colors, all of your like dimensions and stuff like that in XML anyway, and then doing those sorts of population inside your activity is actually causing a bit of spaghetti between your code where all of these things are done. So by doing this in XML, it allows you to keep it all in one place and reference it really easily. And it also means that you can make faster changes to your code and see them happening live, so you can make these changes in your XML files and you can see it in the design preview and see how those are impacting your views without having to build the whole project, run it, run, jump over to that screen and find it. So what types of things can we put in here? So there are a few different types that you can use in uh, XML attributes. So on the left here we have integer, float, boolean, string, and color. These are all really simple things. You should probably get a sense of what those are doing right off the bat just by being a developer and using these things before. The other thing that you can use, you can use dimensions. Uh, dimensions, the, the person can define them in any, any way, shape, or form. They can use DP, SP, points. And then when you reference them in code to pull them out into your custom view, it'll automatically convert them back to pixels for you. Reference will allow you to do things like reference other drawables. So you can think of this uh, like what image view source does. It references another drawable that you can then pull in and use as an object somewhere in your class. Enum will allow you to set a preset set of values that the user can use and put in that space. So a good example here would be something like um, like the image view scale type, where you have like uh, center crop or center inside, those sorts of things. They're a preset set of values that go there that you're defining ahead of time. Flag is used for something like layout gravity, where you might be able to append things together, kind of like a bit mask. And fraction is used for do defining portions. These two last two, you don't you really use all that much. Enum is occasionally helpful, but you mo mainly will focus on the ones on the left side here, which are the most straightforward. So how do we define at so how do we define custom attributes? So the first thing you do is you make, um, you, assuming you already have your custom class built, you go and you make a new declare styleable tag inside your values folder somewhere. So typically we'll put this in its own values file that's specific to the class name. The first thing you have to do is you want to make your, the name of this declare styleable the same as your custom view. And this means that when Android sees this custom view in XML, it'll know to go pull the attributes out of here. So you need to make sure that these match back and forth. Second, you're going to go through and you're going to define an, ad, an adder for each single one. Um, basically, you give it a name and then you give it a format. Format is just going to be one of the things that we mentioned in the previous slides. You just define what the type is and you give it a name. The name, one thing to note that you kind of have to be a little bit careful about is that these names are global. There's no real name spacing here. So it's important to either prefix this or just use names that are descriptive. So here we've, pre we've prepended each one with the custom class name just for, to make sure that we don't get any collisions. But as you can see here, you just simply define something like string color dimension. Enums are a little funky, so um, and flags have a similar sort of format where you define enum and then you just do enum name, and you define each of your values and you give them an integer value that works underneath the hood. So how do we load them? So the first thing you do is you're going to um, typically when you're doing custom views, you're going to be sub you're going to be implementing the constructors that are defined by the view class. So if you use the default context one, just one of the constructor that just takes context, you're not going to get any attributes there. But if you define the other ones, they'll get passed to you. There are three different versions of this that may or may not have these values on the end here, the, de the default style attribute and the default style resource. Um, this is the lollipop version that has all of them defined. If you don't, if you, for the other constructors, you can just replace them with zero. Essentially what you do is um, you're going to set up your view. So the init method here does the same thing that Richard was talking about. You're going to do all your find view by ID, all your initial setup. And the next thing you do is you're going to convert this attribute set that you're passed into a typed array. Attribute set will have all of the values already but it won't take into account anything like styling or anything like that. So it's better to convert it straight to a typed array. All you have to do is call context, obtain styled attributes, pass it the array, pass it the styleable that you defined, and then pass it these two values from the constructor. Then you read those, we'll talk about that in a second, you read those and then you make sure that you recycle the array when you're done with it. You just gotta make sure that you clean it up. So how do I read these? So here, we're, this is our method that's taking the typed array that we just created, and we're gonna talk quickly through how you would populate some simple ones. 
So if, say we have an image resource, we're going to say our image view set image resource, and then you call array.getResource ID. And you pass it the styleable that you define. So this will be your styleable, the declare styleable name that you have, underscore whatever attribute that you whatever attribute name you use. And then this second value will be a default. A bunch of these are going to take default values in case that they're not found. So you good to either you can either put a zero here, or check for zero, make sure if it's locked up, I don't do anything, or you put your default value in here. So that's how you do image, so this is how you do resources. For text, you're just going to call set text array dot get text, and then you pass in your uh, attribute again, and that's just going to give you a char sequence out, and you can just shove it wherever you want. For colors, you're going to do array dot get color. You pass it your color and your uh, attribute name, and then you pass it the default color again. And so then you can just set this as a color. This returns it just as a normal integer like any other color would be. And then the last one here we're going to talk, touch upon is dimensions are a little funky. So dimensions, you do array.get dimension pixel size. There are a couple different overloads here. Dimension pixel size is actually the most useful usually. It'll convert that whatever the DP points or whatever is straight into pixels. And so you, define, you give it the name, you give it your default. Text views, which is a common place we'll use this, the text size is um, expects SP when you pass it into the set text size. So here you have to do a little bit of conversion. There's a little, there's an overload in here for that. That's, it's a pretty straightforward thing to do. So essentially, you just go through each of your different uh, views here, each of your different attributes, apply them to your views, and then you're done. So attributes make your custom views really easy to use, make them really portable, and they're really, really easy to write. So please write them. Thank you.